Hello everyone. Welcome to the day 5 of DevOps series. Today's session is about virtualization and containerization in DevOps. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. We'll be talking about what actually virtualization and containerization is and how it is used in DevOps. So let's see the agenda. The agenda for today is we'll be seeing what virtualization is, problems before virtualization, then we'll jump to containerization we'll see some problems before containerization also and containerization tools so let's move on with the session what is virtualization virtualization is the process of running multiple virtual system or resource on a top of a single physical machine that is what i have explained you this resource could be storage device network device or even a operating system okay so you can see my host my operating system that is nothing but your windows or linux whatever you have or if i talk about from uh, hypervisor os that is your exsi for kernel virtual machine okay on top of that we have a hypervisor which is a software and then you have your own guest os and their applications okay so there is a genuine reason why we can't go with this strategy see what to happen sometimes your one application required system reboot because of uh, uh, package upgradation or any there was a requirement that your system needs to be reboot because of that application your other application will get downtime okay so that is not a best practice okay we should not have anything dependent on the other application so that's why we we always try to keep both the applications in different servers okay because of one application if you you are getting the downtime of other application that means there is a business loss okay and if there is a business loss that means everyone is in radar why this happened who approved this strategy who approved this design okay so that is one of the major issue it may happen some your os crashed or your virtual machine something wrong with your virtual machine again both application down so unnecessary we are trying to create a dependency on the other application of of your previous application so we have to make sure we should not go with this way okay so that's why we always try to run one application in one os but again if we go with this way there is another issue wastage of resources agree or not because your virtual machine is not going to have only 1 gb of ram or 1 cpu cycle okay <laughs> definitely it will have 2 or 3 gb of ram 2 cpu cycles at least 20 or 30 gb of hard disk so if i run one application with this much resources that means there is a wastage of resources i am not able to utilize my resources efficiently okay so that is the problem statement i will show you in ppt so imagine software a running on server a which has ubuntu running on it this this software can run only ubuntu environment so what happened i am only using 10% of my cpu cycle 90% still unutilized wastage of resources wastage of money okay the moment i bring a new software which is dependent on window so now what when virtualization was not there so what you will do you have to purchase a new hardware okay time consuming it is not a cost of, uh, effective solution you have to spend huge amount of money and again you are not able to use efficiently your resources wastage of money okay now so what was the problem buying servers was expensive resources were not being utilized at their full potential the process of getting any software up and running was time consuming disaster recovery was difficult because you have to build the server okay you have to also make sure the coolant and everything the environment should be cool so you have to provide all those resources create a proper data center power backup a lot of things is there data backup hard disk backup so you have to spend a huge amount of money for that okay so that's why it is an expensive solution now when a virtualization comes simple i can create two virtual machines on my single bare metal machine now i can use 20% of cpu that means still i am not efficiently using whole resources but it is better than what we were doing without virtualization so i can install two or different virtual machine on a single bare metal machine you need not to purchase another hardware 
for Windows or Ubuntu. Okay. So what was the advantage? It result in reduced spending, definitely. Resources are utilized more efficiently, but not that much how Docker is using. So I will tell you how Docker is using. Process of getting software up and running is shorter, definitely. If you compare with without virtualization, it's much shorter now. Easier backup and disaster recovery is available. So simply you will create a snapshot of your machine, okay, and create a new machine uh, with that so that your, your disaster recovery is easily available. Okay, now what is containerization? So containerization is nothing but an OS level virtualization method used to deploy and run distributed application without launching the entire virtual machine for each app. Now this is very important, entire virtual machine. We never use entire virtual machine in container. Now let's compare with Docker. Why Docker is, is saying that without launching an entire virtual machine. Now, what is Docker? As I told you, it is an OS level virtualization. So we have a hardware. We have installed the OS on top of that. And on top of that, we are going to install the engine, a container engine, which is nothing but Docker. So Docker is a container engine. It is not container. It is a container engine, which create containers for you. Now, these containers are isolated in nature means there is no direct connection between two containers. We can set up the connection, but there is no direct connection. We have to write some rules. We have to pass some configuration so that the communication will happen between the two containers. But by default, there is no direct connection. So each container are isolated in nature means they have their own OS, they have their own process and they have their own application. Okay. So my container will have all the binaries, all the libraries to run that particular application and the application. For example, if I am trying to run a Java application, so what are the things I have to require? Java, a application server, or any binary or required libraries for that particular application and the application archive. All those things are the part of my container. Okay, so we create the container using image the way you are creating your just a quick info guys if you want to make a career in cloud and devops then intellipad provides an advanced certification in cloud computing and devops by enict academy iit Roorkee, and it is taught by iit Roorkee professors and industry experts this course is designed to upskill and land your dream job now let's continue with the session setting up your uh, os in your laptop or in your desktop using an ISO image. In the same way, we are trying to create the uh, container using Docker image, okay? In place of ISO, I'm using Docker image. Now, this Docker image are very light weight in nature, okay? It doesn't have all the processes. It doesn't have all the binaries, no. It will have only required number of files to run the OS, okay? and your binaries required to run your application your and your application archive that's it okay so the moment you try to create a container that means your os is already boot up the moment you fire the command it won't take more than two or three seconds to pull the image and create the container and where and it you won't able to even see the booting process that much your container is fast okay so we always use micro OS in container, which will have only required number of files to run the OS. That's why it is saying without launching the entire virtual machine. Okay. Now problem before containerization, when containerization was not there, developer when run the code on their system, it would run perfectly, but the same code would not run on the operation steam system. This is normal use case in every organization. You will face these challenges. Why? Why this is happening? Developer able to run uh, their code in their laptop or desktop, whatever they, they are using for development. But sometimes that code is not going to run in the production environment or any machine which is responsible to host that application. Why? Because we can't install any gray uh, or I can say unauthorized software. We can't blindly upgrade the softwares. Okay. We can't give the permissions blindly to the users or anyone else. Okay. So there are a lot of restrictions on the virtual machines or on the hardware, which is running in an environment, which is responsible to host their application. 
why this is happening why that so much restrictions are there one is you have to you have to secure your application second there are some rules and regulation as per the iit standards that's why you you can see the the certificates what uh, every organization gets okay they will say uh, we are cmm file level we have this security uh, or this certificate or we have that certificate who gave that certificate to them uh, that means in uh, tcs or wipro can't say that i am owning this certificate they can't say by their own there are some auditing organizations like kpmg or we have an uh, n number of organizations are there okay so they audit your organization they will see are you deployed all license based os there should not be any uh, fault information provided to the auditing uh, organization who released the certificate or who gave the certificate to that organization why we show that we own this certificate because that produce the or which give the trust between the client and the service industry if i am owning some certificate that definitely you guys uh, will automatically gain the trust on me okay yes he won't do anything wrong with us so that's why every organization wants the, that kind of certificates but why this things comes into the picture why we have to go with some standards some governance because to overcome uh, all those uh, cheats persons who try to give the wrong information to the to the public and gain the more profit from that that is happened okay that uh, share markets do, or all those things happen okay so they unnecessarily sends the wrong information to the public and from there they will gain a lot of profits and all those things so uh, that's why auditing uh, organizations comes into the market and they audit all the organizations okay so that's why you will see a lot of uh, financial institutions and all those things they they follow this process very regularly okay whatever the trainings and all those things are coming that's why they align those trainings to you whenever you join any organization or every year that you have to follow you have to go with the, all these trainings so that is the motive of that that you can't go and deploy anything in your systems organization systems so definitely developer always face this challenges whenever he try to push the or deploy the application into the organization system okay it is a very restrictive thing you have to follow a lot of uh, policies rules regulations so we can't allow anything okay to deploy directly on those systems now what happen so the moment developer give that code to the, the operation guy operation guy will try to deploy it okay so the problem was the environment the code being run in well that means there is no issue with the code the problem is with the environment because uh, the developers machines and the machine uh, the operations team machine is totally different okay it might happen the version of uh, build tool or the binary is what the developer is using same version we can install it we are not authorized to do that it may happen that the latest version is buggy uh, and we can't install buggy version so even a single minor version create a lot of uh, mess with your code okay now this to and fro things happen between the developer and the operation team which leads to the wastage of money and time so the problem was environment why not give the same vm to the operation and testing team what is the issue between this vm took too many resource to run so again you have to spend huge amount of money vm were too big in size to be portable as i told you you have to provide minimum 10 to 15 gb uh, of hard disk that is going to be the size of your vm so the port if you try to copy that much data it will take huge amount of time vm were not developer friendly developer doesn't know how os work how to increase the resource how to decrease the resource how to increase the disk size all those things how to provide the admin rights all those things so developer not aware of that so these are the issues now how container problems uh, how this container solve that issue so with all containers all environment issue were resolved the developer could easily wrap their code in a lightweight container and pass it on to the operation team so we have a dedicated image for example i have created a tomcat image okay now tomcat requires just an application to host your uh, application or your website so developer will download that particular image he will wrap that image with his code test it out on their own machine and send that image to the operation team same image will go over there he will download that image and host the application so there is no environment change at all 
because all the environment, all the binaries are already in that image. And these images are very lightweight in nature, so it's easy to portable. It won't use that much resources. It won't consume time. That's why container resolve all those issues. Advantage of container, containers are not resource hungry. They are lightweight and hence portable. They are developer friendly and can be configured through the code. Okay, we have to just write some commands. Okay, it doesn't need any development skill. Okay, it's just a very simple text formatted file where you just pass some Linux commands and create an image. So just don't worry about it. Okay, it's very Docker is one of the easiest tool to learn in DevOps. Now containerized tools, Mesos, Rocket, Docker. So Rocket is still in beta version. Okay, Docker is being used a lot because of is the way of integration of docker with the other tool you need not to worry about it just pass uh, install the plugins install the software pass uh, your url and it's done you don't need to uh, do a lot of configuration for integration so this graph clearly shows you why docker is so much popular just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in cloud and DevOps, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification in cloud computing and DevOps by ENICT Academy IIT Roorkee. And it is taught by IIT Roorkee professors and industry experts. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job. 